Good morning to everyone. My name is Frigama. I'm Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Humanities. And it's my privilege and uh, pleasure to welcome you here today and for the next three days uh, for the International Conference in Classics and, and Ancient History. First of all, uh, I write to greet uh, Professor Delphine Leon, Vice Rector of uh, the University of Coimbra, and Professor Carmen Suarez, Scientific Coordinator uh, of the Center for Classical and Humanistic Studies. And of course, both of them are professors of uh, our uh, Faculty of Arts and uh, Humanities. I also greet uh, all the participants in this conference uh, here in this uh, Teatro, Paul Quintella, and uh, in the online uh, sessions. As you know, the pandemic situation has many consequences in all activities. We are delighted to have you with us to participate and share in our international conference. Thank you for coming, uh, or thank you for being uh, online. As I read in the website, the International Conference in Classics and Ancient History assumes the role of a forum for discussion among experts from over uh, the world. I, was, I also highlight the role uh, that the Center for Classical and Humanistic Studies of the University of Cambridge has had in organizing scientific events of which they are a recent example, the International Conference on the History of Classical Antiquity in the Disciplinary Approaches in 2015, and more recently, in 2019, the 12th Celtic Conference in Classics. The International Conference in Classics and Ancient History uh, welcomes proposals from scholars of any countries for single discipline or in discipline, interdisciplinary panels in such research areas as Greek and Roman literature, ancient history, archaeology, philosophy, art, religious studies, linguistics, concerning any period of antiquity and its rece uh, reception up to uh, present day. I also would like to underline how important is this conference in a turbulent and changing world. When uh, we try to understand the past, more knowledge, tools, and skills, we will have to discuss the present and the future. So thank you to the organizing and scientific committees, and also to the executive committee and uh, staff members. I uh, would also like to thank professors, researchers, and students uh, of classical studies and uh, to the Center of Classical and Humanistic Studies for the organization uh, of the International Conference in, in our faculty. To all, uh, thanks uh, also to the partners and to FCT. Finally, I'd like to close my short, short speech by wishing the conference every success. I hope that every one of you will have a fruitful and meaningful exchanges in these four days. To all of you, thank you for being here. Welcome and enjoy the conference. Dear Vice Rector for Culture and Open Science, Professor Delphine Leão, representing the Rector of the University of Coimbra. Dear Director of the Faculty of Arts and Humanities of the University of Coimbra, Professor Rui Gama. Dear Speakers of the Conference in Classics and Ancient History, ladies and gentlemen, I am very happy to welcome you to the largest international scientific event held by the Center for Classical and Humanistic Studies at the University of Coimbra, a Portuguese research unit founded in 1967 
and that currently has about 140 researchers. Originally planned for the same days a year ago, the conference in classics and ancient history was thought to be an, op an opportunity to bring together researchers of various generations from numerous different countries, facilitating the strengthening of relations among arts and humanities scientists from several continents. In times like those we live in, where this kind of knowledge, and in particular the classical studies, face warring attacks on its maintenance, and the recognition of its social importance is increasingly threatened, a glance through the list of participants planned for the next four days reveals a strong, therefore also powerful, scientific and human capital. In an event where, for global health security reasons, we are constrained or very limited in terms of travel and face-to-face -face meetings, it becomes more difficult for each of the participants or attendees to have an insight of how many we are, who we are, where do we come from, and what are our areas of academic interest. In the absence of the possibility of finding out an answer, or of finding out the answers to these questions through personal contact and conviviality, in this welcome session, I will be the hostess, greeting and introducing the guests. Let us begin by perceiving the numerical universe of listed speakers as well as their gender and geographical diversity. <clears throat> Sorry. We are 315 speakers, including keynote speakers, distributed across three continents, and with a slight predominance of ladies. Although a male representation above 40%, ensures gender balance. If we look at the nationalities of the speakers, we find that the four most represented countries in descending order are Spain, Portugal, Italy, and Brazil, a maximum of uh, 68 and a minimum of 34 speakers, followed by the USA, UK, Germany, and France, with a maximum of 30 and minimum of nine speakers. And which are the university institutions with the most registered members? The graph shows those with at least three speakers. You can see, of course, Portugal is there, but also other countries and, and institutions from all around the world. The themes of the 22 panels reveal areas of interest spread across a wide and diverse range of fields of expertise, from history, Greek and Roman, as well as Northwestern Iberia, to biography, arts, literature, theater, music and dance, Sciences such as medicine, textual criticism, mythology, politics, philosophy, ethics, and the receptions of the classics. On my own behalf and on the organization as a whole, I would like to publicly express a very special thanks to the panel conveners for all the work in building their programs and the ongoing dialogue with our executive committee. Because it would not be, uh, sorry, because it would not have been possible to individually and nominally thank the dozens of people who made it possible to prepare this conference in a hybrid format, online and in person, 
I do so by presenting those who, unfortunately, some of us, due to reasons we all know, um, will not be able to meet face to face in the work and communal areas of the Faculty of Arts and Humanities of the University of Coimbra, but that we wish we'll be able to attend in a future event. I begin by thanking the young researchers at the Center for Classic and Humanistic Studies, members of the Executive Committee, for the committed and efficient way with which they manage a complex logistics of contacts and materials and spaces organization and preparation. Here are their faces and names. The staff members consisting of PhD, uh, PhD, masters and bachelor students has been tireless in supporting the executive committee in more practical tasks. I hope this experience will contribute to a richer and more rewarding academic path. Here they are. Last but not the least, we cannot forget our scientific committee enthusiasm, also representative of the happy reunion of colleagues from European, Brazilian and American institutions. All of them have collaborated and play an active role in the Center for Classical and Humanistic Studies at the University of Coimbra's areas of research. Thank you to all of them. I speak at this opening session on behalf of two collectives, the research center I coordinate and the organizing committee of this event. Although the members of the organizing committee are familiar faces and names to many of you, the way to make them present is to call them to the screen. It is common for a classicist to quote one of his or her research authors to close a presentation, particularly an official one. I am going to break this tradition. I choose to leave for the end of these welcoming words the recollection, a virtual one, using images projected on the screen, of two remarkable persons from the classical studies of Coimbra and the world. I am going to break another protocol. I will not abide by the lady's first saying. Anton Powell and Luisa de Nazaré Ferreira are the most present absentees of this conference in classics and ancient history. You will soon understand why. It was the opportunity that in 2019, Anton gave our research center to host the 12th Celtic Conference in Classics that inspired us to plan, under his auspicious tutorship, an international conference in classics and ancient history. In addition to being a member of our conference's scientific committee, Anton had already accepted the invitation to be our guest keynote speaker. Unfortunately, the ruthless Atropos did not allow his and our purpose to come to life and as we have planned. As we have planned. Beyond all Anton's immense scholarly merits that I will not get into detail today, I shall miss and always remember him as one of the dearest and most sensitive classicists I ever known, I have ever known. About two years ago, he spoke at the Celtic Conference in Classics in this very place where I find myself now for a number of speakers exactly the same as the one we have gathered today. He actively participated in several panels 
and celebrated with joy and enthusiasm the conference closing at the Cunimbriga Museum's Paris still. We remember and project for the future one of his greatest legacies to disseminate the classical studies and stimulate the creation of intergenerational and multinational research networks within an environment of human proximity, proximity and conviviality. I had arranged with our dear and late Anton several details of the conference we are going, we are opening today. One of them was the date, showing an extreme understanding. He gave in to the argument I presented to him that the first day of the conference would be June 22, considering then the year of 2020 and not any other day. The proposal was to mark what would be the fifth anniversary, uh, anniversary of a young colleague and friend, researcher of our center and professor of our faculty, whom Atropos had cut the thread of life too soon. Luisa de Nazaré Ferreira distinguished herself in the areas of Greek philology and art, especially the archaic lyric of Simonides of Chaos and the issues associated with childhood. The panel one of our event materializes the scientific tribute we wanted to pay to her. We wanted to pay her, sorry. Luisa's departure at the acme of her life awakened in those who knew her well in person or through her writings, a feeling of frustration for not having have her with us any longer. Remembering her today, seeing her smile for a few seconds on this screen of the Teatro Paulo Quintela or on the Center of Classical and Humanistic Studies YouTube channel, are the human tribute of an institution made of people and for people. You are all very welcome to Coimbra's Conference in Classics and Ancient History. Thank you very much. Dear Professor Rui Gama, Director of the Faculty of Letters, it is a pleasure to have you here and having us, of course, welcoming us in our own home. Our own home. And it is a fact already remembered by you and my, by my colleague that uh, during the time when we were the director of, of our faculty, we had at the Classical Studies Institute and at our research center, the two biggest uh, conferences, conferences that we have ever organized. I mean, the Celtic Conference in Classics and this one with precisely the same number, which is amazing, of participants, I mean, speakers, 315. Uh, Professor Carmen Suarez, my dear colleague and coordinator of our research center for classical and humanistic studies and the main responsible for the organization of this event. Thank you very much for the opening words. They were precise as, you, as usual. They were acute and sensitive. And all this is extremely important for this kind of, uh, of opening of a conference of this kind. <clears throat> and finally, uh, last not least, 
all the participants in the in the conference those who are with us here face to face uh, which is extremely nice because we know how difficult it is to have people and especially coming from different countries thank you very much for being here and for all the others the majority that are following us and will follow us during the next four days uh, during which we will have the, the conference. Uh, it's, it, for me, it's really an institutional and personal pleasure to, to be here and to speak. And I will start with the personal one, because as you know, I am as well a classicist. That's what I do. I'm a classical philologist with interest in ancient history. So this is the kind of conference that clearly I mean, meets my interests, and I am also involved in the organization, and I will try to give my best and present the paper as well this week. But it's certainly um, extremely pleasant to see how so many people, in fact, uh, replied positively to our, um, our invitation to come to Coimbra. But from uh, uh, an institutional point of view, this is, this is even perhaps more remarkable. And I'm also here representing the rector of our, of our university, Emilcar Falcão, who cannot be here because of other commitments. So it is really a pleasure for me to represent him and say how important it is for a university like Coimbra to host this kind of conference, to be the venue of this kind of international conference. We have classics for many years. Uh, and of course, we intend to have classics for many years to come, but we also know as well that classics as a community is not a huge community, neither in this university where we, are, where we have classics when Latin, Greek, language, literature, culture and history and so on, but even in other places, I mean, the community is not very big. What makes us bigger than what, than what we really are is the way we are able to work together, the way we are able to network, to perform, to combine networks, and of course, being able to scale what is small. So this idea of scaling what is small, what is concise in the numbers, make classics along a far-reaching and an extremely stimulating area of studies. And it is also extremely exciting to see that in the 22 panels that during the, the next four days, we'll be debating, I mean, every kind of subjects, including those subjects that are challenging us in the sense, what do we as classicists have to offer to the 21st century? And this, this is also the kind of question that we have to address, because we live in our time in our circumstances, and we must be able to give the appropriate, appropriate answers to our times and, of course, ensure that this tradition, this heritage is kept alive and, of course, will give the, the, best, uh, the best contribution to our world. And that we may make the start of the opening session here at this, uh, at this place. It's well known for those who work here in Coimbra because it's the Paolo Quintella Theatre, as has already been, been told. But in this same place, we had for many years, until now and in the future as well, we have performed the classical, uh, classical theatre. Uh, tragedy, comedy, Greek and Latin. And it's extremely interesting to see how those texts were given a new life every time they are performed and they are made uh, open to uh, a wider public. So that's precisely what we want to do during those days. And of course, for those people who are here, they will be able to enjoy, I mean, Coimbra uh, weather, the, I mean, the seaside, the way we like to welcome people. But of course, the community will be much bigger than it is than those representing or being here personally. But we would like to uh, make this, uh, this invitation for those who were not able to come personally this time, that in the near future, in the, in the future opportunity, may visit us and, of course, be able to, 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 let's say, talk and discuss face to face. So, congratulations on the organization and uh, 
have a nice time doing these these four four next four days a nice and very productive uh, time as it will certainly will will be the case thank you very much and have a nice work thank you